Hey there, Internet. It's me, Broken Terrain, and I've got a fantastic project to share with you today. It's The Owl House. I'm bringing you part one after the drop. All right, this is my first commissioned piece from a very good friend of mine. I'm so happy to do this build for her and... Uh, it's for her birthday. She's buying it for herself for her birthday. So happy birthday. And uh, hopefully I get it done in time. Oh, time's getting tight, let me tell you. But um, I'm really happy with how it's turned out so far. And I hope she enjoys the video docu uh, documenting the pieces creation. It started off with a lot of... Um, uh, research, I suppose, studying of reference. Um, so she also sent me a, a Google uh, doc with tons of screen grabs of the Owl House from different angles. And uh, these were incredibly helpful. I used um, most of the images and referred back to them constantly while I um, studied the piece. I find that if I draw it out, it helps me kind of understand the, the 3Dality of it. 3Dality, I just made up a word. <laughs> so I would uh, look at the reference, sketch it out, try to get an idea on measurements and sizing, and ultimately took the, um, the one of the reference for the front into Illustrator, which is um, a vector program, and I used a two inch by one inch square. Uh, so I sized the image up so that the door was roughly one by two inch, which goes along with uh, my building scale. And using that size, I was able to get general dimensions for the rest of the owl house. Um, that worked really well. Uh, it helped me sketch things out, compare uh, locations for different bits and pieces in the reference and overall I got some decent measurements set up uh, something that I was happy with and I begun to uh, take those measurements and transfer them to some half inch XBS foam and just carefully drawing out the curves and sections uh, taking into account uh, how many of what I would need and uh, eventually managed to get a pretty good looking facsimile of the Owl House skeleton created. Uh, and at this point, I'll tell you, it was a pretty daunting task. The houses I generally make, the buildings I make are all real standard construction. I don't bow the uh, ruse. I don't sag the walls or anything. So uh, the fact that this, uh, this house has so many curves and so many awkward uh, angles and things. Uh, I was really worried about, how do I want to put it? Ca catching the character, properly constructing the character of the house, particularly because it wasn't for me. Uh, it was for my friend who, who expressed that she wanted the owl house. So it was really important that I get all of these uh, curves and things correct so that it um, at, at a glance instantly says Owl House. I think I pulled it off. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Uh, did I miss something? Is there something that uh, you think I should add to make it a little more alley for the house? <laughs> let me know. Um, once the panels are cut though, uh, my mind had been eased and it was just time to start carving and cutting away details. Here you can see uh, a close up of that very distinct door and door jam with those great, uh, the great little owl wings on uh, either side of the door. A very distinct five boards across the uh, door. Uh, and then the, that great wood trim across the bottom. 
once I've got those designs carved in and I'm happy with them, I do some brickwork along the bottom, sketch out the general uh, place and shape of the windows. And at first I wasn't going to cut the windows out, um, but I did recall us mentioning, boy, it'd be really cool if the thing lit up. <laughs> And so, of course, always wanting, aiming to please, I, uh, I cut the windows out and um, figured out a way to get the inside lit up. Then it's onto the roof. I turn to some thin chip that uh, I get from certain companies, uh, vitamin energy supplement drinks. I'd love for them to sponsor me. Hashtag ZipFizz, sponsor me. <laughs> anyway, their thin, uh, the thin chipboard that they use for their packaging works incredibly well for crafting. And in this particular, for these uh, curved roofs of the owl house. So with some hot glue down the, uh, the, the sides of the two houses there, I'm able to hot glue and wrap the roof around. I do it in sections and it ends up looking really good. This allows me to add that uh, that little dormer section onto the side and the whole thing starts to really take shape. I take a dollar store piece of foam core, uh, do the brickwork, and then with some measurements, uh, curve it around to get that uh, side tower aspect of the owl house created then i'm going to take some of that that modeling foam that i had i struggled to find a use for early on and now i use it constantly i fill in cracks with it blend and uh and just overall fix my my mistakes and my issues with the building so here where the tower meets the uh, side of the house i Get to push in some of that modeling foam smooth it out and that way i don't have these strange gaps uh, in the building i'm also going to use this to uh, fill in the gaps of the the eye window uh, so the i mentioned the lights i want this thing to light up the problem with doing windows is that the windows don't always create that perfect seal in your jam and then you're going to get light peeking through the edges of the window i hate that i hate it so much it it takes away from the the effect with this mousse you can uh smear it in like caulk around the edges of your window and the jam of the window there the frame of the window and this actually obfuscates and hides that light so a little tip i learned during this project that you can use that uh, foam as like a caulking to obfuscate or, or hide the light. Now the Owl House has a lantern on the outside and I wasn't sure if this was going to work, um, but I took one of those dollar store string of lights. I cut the very end light off, shortened it a bit, and then um, using some cardstock, some beads, and a, uh, a jewelry fitting actually turn the light into a bit of a lantern and then with a little black paint accentuate the build and uh, it's working <laughs> it works amazing um, so great success with this as well uh, i'm able to have this light on the outside as the lantern exactly like the owl house has while the rest of the lights get to be hidden inside and when they're turned on they're going to light all the windows up I'm super pumped with this. And then uh, you saw that the collar of the light was lighting up, but I'm going to hide that with black paint. No problem. I hit my proxon and cut up a ton of shingles for the owl house and then just start uh, laying the shingle work down. And here it is all done up. God, it's looking really good at this point. Done some trim work for the doors, added the handles. All the shingling is done. Uh, time to turn to the windows. And to do the windows, I find a nice plexi uh, card, you know, or um, packaging 
for some kind of product that uh, came into the house, look for the big flat panels of it. Uh, I love it. And then you're gonna run a sanding block over the over both sides. And this is just to make it opaque. You certainly don't have to do this if you're doing an interior, but I am not doing an interior. Instead, this will be a lighted piece. So um, you don't want people to look in and see nothing. So to fix that, you sand down the sides of your, uh, of your clear plastic. This is going to uh, just hide, make it a little cloudy. So the light's still gonna beam through, but now no one will be able to see into the building. Then with some strips of that thin cardstock, run through some white PVA glue. I get my pattern for the eye. This was the most important window and I wanted to make sure that I got it as close to the uh, references that I could because this was one of those key visual elements. The smaller windows, <laughs> I've never been a fan of doing windows and the Owl House has made that worse. <laughs> These windows were a nightmare, tiny and small. Part of it was my fault because each window is individually sized and shaped. No two windows are, are alike and it just made for an absolute nightmare of a process, creating each individual window and then trying to follow the reference for the uh, the slats in the window. So most of them, there were a couple that I followed, some of the larger ones, but the smaller ones, I just, I minimized them. Uh, I hope you don't mind, <laughs> birthday girl. <laughs> I was going crazy, uh, them windows, man. I hate them windows. <laughs> Onto the base, I've got a big, uh, I think it's a 16 by 15 inch block for the base of two inch. I'm gonna go around and uh, carve up and rough it up as stone. This doesn't quite fit the reference, but the, I mean, this is a showpiece, right? So I can't just extend it. Uh, so we talked about certain dimensions. I made it those dimensions. I laid it out. The tower's not gonna be exactly in the spot it is on the reference. Um, on the reference, it's a bit farther back and then behind the house, it looks. Although I'm not going to lie, a couple of the references kind of disagreed with its overall placement. It was hard to figure it out, but uh, I'm going to put it where I'm going to put it so that we keep the piece at a certain size. Um, then I'm going to trace out where the house is and carve down for where the basement goes. There's a basement that goes down. I'm gonna carve out a block and then replace that block with a carved set of stairs. And then this is going to allow me to uh, then finish that wall. I'm gonna use that uh, modeling foam to blend the edges. Hopefully it looks pretty good when I'm done. And then I'm gonna make a new door the length of, the, uh, of that wall now uh, descending into the basement. Once I know where the house is going, I paint the inside with a black, and then I put a couple of foam ribs in there so that I can angle the lights so that the light strip, um, I've got one light pointing to each window or each set of windows. I want everything to light up really well. Here you can see the finished basement stair. The whole building is glued down and the lights the switch and the battery box have been hidden in the foam. I have created a little pull away that's magnetized and she'll be able to pull that off, flick the switch on and switch it off as necessary and even swap batteries over time. Here you can see it fully lit up and I'm absolutely excited. The lights are beaming through all of the windows. Time to move on to what was a very, very difficult bit of landscape to wrap my head around. The references were confusing the hell out of me. Apparently, there is a very small, subtle hill along the back, but in the front, it's very obvious. It's a, there's stairs going to it, but then it slopes along the wall to a zero, like a zero gradient at the back. And it took me for ever to wrap my head around this strange uh, bit of landscape around the owl house. Eventually I figured it out. And so here you see me uh, with it glued down in place. And then once again, I'm, I'm going back to that modeling foam. 
uh, where my knife gouged out and I needed to smooth the areas in, I just puttied that foam in and let it harden. Then I'm going to cover the whole thing with a white PVA, flock it with my two-tone sand, and that is going to end part one. Did you like this video? I hope you did. Smash like if you did. It would really help me out. Subscribe to the channel if you want to make sure you see part two and other videos like it. I've got a massive back catalog full of incredible crafting videos. A super thanks if you want to buy me a coffee as a thank you for this video would really help me out. Thank you so much. I've also opened up memberships on my YouTube. So uh, if you're interested in helping the channel out even more, go ahead and take a look at that stuff, please. Thank you so much. As always, like each other, love each other, and craft on.